Hello, and welcome to Agrosive Physics. Today is day 13, and what I'd like to do is continue our problem solving and look at problems dealing with objects that are thrown to a higher point. So in these problems, either the object will jump from a lower to a higher position, or perhaps uh, a ball will be thrown from a lower to a higher position. But in each of these cases, the displacement of the object will be in the positive direction. Remember, we're only dealing with one directional motion or one dimensional motion. Um, in this case, we'll stick to the y-axis if we're looking at an xy graph. And the problems will involve objects starting at a lower point uh, and ending at a higher point. So let's look at a few practice problems now. All right, this problem involves a person taking a basketball and throwing it up in the air and then it landing in the basket. What we know is that it was dropped from a height or thrown from a height of 0 0.5 meters above the ground and then it goes 2 meters above the basket. So the total height it goes above is 2 meters from the basket. What we're not given is how high the basket is. Now we may have to look that up, but I happen to know it's 10 feet. And I'm assuming this is a, an adult. If it was a kid, it would be eight feet, a young, young kid. Now, 10 feet is not gonna be very useful to us, so we need to convert it directly to meters. So we're gonna put feet on the bottom, meters on the top. One meter is 3.25 feet. If you forgot that, you can look it up. I'm going to take 10 and I'm going to divide that by 3.25 and I get a height of 3.077 meters. So instead of 10 feet, we're going to replace that with 3.077 meters. That's to the hoop itself. Now we have a lot of numbers here. So we have to be careful about which one we're going to use for the problem. If the entire height of the basketball to the ground, or the hoop to the ground, is 3.077, then I can subtract this 0.5, minus 0 0.5 meters, to see how far it goes from the hand to the hoop. And if it goes another 2 meters above that, I can then add 2 meters, and that will tell me my total vertical displacement. I should be able to find the initial velocity from that number once I write my givens out. So if I take 3.077 minus 0.5 plus 2, the entire height is 4.577 meters. And that's what I'll use in my givens list. So what I'm going to do to find the initial velocity, I'm going to use displacement is 4.577 meters, acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My hidden variable, the ball is going to stop at the top, VF is zero, and I'm going to find T. No going to find VI. So I'm going to use equation 5 to do that. VF squared minus VI squared equals 2AD. 0 squared minus VI squared, still don't know it, 2 negative 9.8 times 4.577 meters. I'm going to multiply 2 times 9.8 times 4.577. I'm going to get 89.71. So negative VI squared equals negative 89.71. I'm going to take the square root, although the negatives will just cancel. So square root of both sides, second function, second answer, and I'm getting an initial velocity of 9.5 meters per second.
That's how fast the person needed to throw it in order for it to do what we just said. Travel from a height of 0.5 meters and then go two meters above the hoop. The hardest part of this one was determining what we knew about displacement. We had a lot of numbers and we needed to um, manipulate them in order to get the full path of the ball on its way up. All right, for this next one, we're going to have a baseball player toss a baseball to a fan sitting in the upper deck. So the fan is going to be above, hopefully in a seat, the path, and they're going to toss the ball up, and it's going to drop right in their mitt. So what do we know, and what do we need to know? Well, first of all, a baseball is tossed to a fan on the upper deck. The ball is thrown at 30 meters per second. So VI is 30 meters per second. And lands 7.7 .7 meters above the ground. So displacement is 7.7 .7 meters. Now, even though the player tossed the ball, we cannot know how tall the player is from this problem. So we have to assume it's 7.7 .7 meters from where the ball is released. It says, how long does the fan have to react for the ball to drop into their glove? So we want to find out how long they have the time before the ball drops in their glove. Now the other thing we need to remember is that we're on the Earth's surface, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and we want to find T. So. I'm thinking equation 4, D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared is going to be appropriate for this problem. 7.7 .7 meters equals 30 meters per second T plus 1 half negative 9.8 meters per second squared T squared. Now let's simplify this a little bit. 7.7 .7 equals 30 t minus 4.9 t squared. We haven't dealt with problems where there's multiple t's before. Let me rearrange this again. Negative 4.9 t squared plus 30 t and I'm going to bring the 7.7 .7 over. Minus 7.7 .7 equals 0. Now this format reminds me of something I've done in math class. And that's dealing with the quadratic equation, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And at this point, you should recall that each of these terms is a, b, or c. And we can plug them into this equation. Now, you can do it this way using the equation. We can use an online quadratic solver. You could even use a graph and try to find the roots of the graph where they intersect the x-axis perhaps. Um, I'm going to stick with an online equation solver and when I do that I have two values. t can either be 0 0.268 or t could be 5.854. Now why would we have two different answers? Well the reason that's the case is because when the ball was released and moved its way up it was at the height we were looking at which was 7.7 .7 meters twice on the way up and on the way down. Now the way the problems worded it says how long does the fan have to react for the ball to drop into their glove. So is the ball going on its way up or down when it reaches the fan? And the fact of the matter is it's on its way down. So what we need to do is use the longer time. Now some problems may give you a negative time for the quadratic. Well if there's a negative time that's going to be one that we eliminate immediately. But in some cases you'll have two times that are positive, two times that are feasible and you'll need to determine which one is appropriate. 
know, if the fan stuck the glove out and the ball was traveling upward and they caught it as it was moving upward, we would have used the 0.268. But since it was the entire trip and the ball was on its way back down, we used 5.854 seconds.